Welcome to AMT Tech Trend Podcast, where we discuss the latest manufacturing technology research and news. Today's episode is sponsored by IMTS Plus. I am the Director of Technology, Benjamin Moses, and I'm here with... Stephen Lamarca, Technology Analyst. Steve, you're looking suave as usual. I'm disheveled Friday. Dude, I'm struggling. <laughs> We're recording off schedule because I got travel coming up, but uh, I'm in casual attire today. And to be honest, if you ever see me in a polo shirt... My collar is always busted. So keep that in mind. <laughs> I, I was supposed to be back in D.C. at 7.30 p.m. yesterday. Yeah, what happened? Uh, American decided to <laughs> delay its flight over and over and over again for like six hours straight. The tease of uh, And I ended up delay. getting here. Well, not six, five and a half. Yeah, six, round and, up. And yeah, I got back at 1, at 1 a.m. this morning. And I was like, I would the entire time. I was like, I'm just going to message Ben. Like, we can't do it tomorrow. <laughs> and then I kept thinking about the podcast. And then I thought about um, how I've got a road tripping with Steve season three planning meeting today. Nice. Um, I was like, I can't miss any of this stuff. Yeah, we it. can't put off either of these. Yeah. You got to give the people so, what they want. Steve. So, you know what? <laughs> I came in looking like this. And fortunately, fortunately, nothing here is against the law. That's I mean, true. against the rules. <laughs> to my luck yep it is above night well it said the weather says it should get above 90 today sure and it's a friday meaning i'm allowed to wear shorts yeah nice and doug is too so he's following the rules why too. were you traveling was traveling for rapid so rapid is uh an additive trade show put on by sme yep and it was awesome this was my first rapid this was my first time in detroit so I finally got to um, experience Detroit, but Rapid. Let me go into just a quick description of Rapid. It's it's an additive trade show right. for with with around. It's called Rapid because it's around the topic of rapid prototyping. Okay, um, we, which is one of the use cases sure. of additive manufacturing. Yep. It's not the only use case, but it is. It's the use case that they focus on at the trade show, rapid prototyping. Cool. And when, you know, it comes to us at AMT, we're not necessarily, we're interested in prototyping, but mm -hmm. it's not the bread and butter. We're in full scale production. We, <laughs> we track that kind of stuff. Um, we're in all use cases of additive. So, but, but rapid is so hot right now because yep. additive is still so hot. Fair. And, and frankly, it's like the only, they've cornered the market. There's another one. I forget. It's because they might not be friends with us right now. I'm not going to mention them. Um, I still like them. I still want to go to your show. Please let me in. Let me in. Um, but uh, yeah, rapid. They're still they're still tight with us. So nice. uh, so uh, it was it was a real pleasure going there. It was sick. Yeah. Um, Give me some highlights from the. All right. So let's event. start. Let's do. I'm going to go try to speed run the whole thing. Do it. Land in Detroit. I'm like yes. I've never been to Detroit. This is my first time. Right. And I'm driven through there and it's like dead. There's no traffic. There's nobody on the streets, yeah. which is sometimes good, it, which is sometimes good because it, but like at the same, like, like the only other city that a big American city that I know of that's like that. Um, and this was pre pandemic, by the way, the right. city that I went to Cleveland. Oh yeah. You know, I went to Cle but. For whatever reason, people don't. I like Cleveland. I like Some Cleveland. people don't like Cleveland. Very friendly. Like I love any big feeling city right. that doesn't have a lot of traffic. So I'm like, but what is going on here? It reminds is me it, of Walking Dead when cities are completely empty like that. Yeah. So I can do it's, get a little It's scared. a little uneasy. <laughs> yeah. So we're the lift is taking me through Detroit, and yep. then we come across this big building complex. Right. And I'm like, oh my God, that's the GM headquarters. Nice. But I have seen pictures. I recognize it only because I've seen the pictures of the headquarters before. Right. Those artist renderings, those, oh, those yeah. Photoshop yeah. pictures <laughs> of the GM headquarters sure. make it look way lighter and brighter and more silvery oh. than the building is in real life. It was all dim and yellowed <laughs> from like UV rays from the sun right. over so many years. And, um, and it was just, I'm not going to lie. I was a little put off by Detroit at first. I was like, this is like a U.S. version of Pyongyang, North Korea. <laughs> like it feels it's a little it, rough. Yeah. Yeah. I know what you mean. And and then like, you know, when during the event, when we were like when we 
would get a chance to leave and go get uh, lunch somewhere right. or dinner. Uh, at one point, Nina and I uh, went for lunch. We left the show because we just needed to get out of the the craziness. It was packed. Yep. It really was. Nowhere else in Detroit was <laughs> packed, but the show was packed. And so we decided to – she had found like a taco place on the way in. Mm -hmm. and it was like she wanted to go there. And our Lyft driver who's taking us there – which it took forever to get Lyft drivers out in Detroit, oh, by the way. That's like you wait at least 15 minutes to get a ride yeah. just because they don't have that many that there's just not that many people driving <laughs> around and they take us to lunch and she, this Lyft driver is like pointing out other restaurants like in the area as we're getting out there cool. um, that are good places to eat. Right. Didn't think I needed to know that at, at the yeah. time we only had, you know, four days to right. take in the city and the show, of course, um, but we get to she the the Lyft driver she nice lady she jumps uh, dumps us off at the restaurant we're trying to go to. It's closed. Oh no! Google says it's open. <laughs> they let you down. <laughs> the sign on the door says it's open. Oh. There's a handwritten sign that says "Power's out." <laughs> I have never been anywhere in the U.S. where there's been a power grid issue. I've I've read stories sure. about like you know sure. power grid issues in Texas, but they have their own power grid. Right. You know, Detroit does not. They're on like you know the East Coast. Right. grid right and it's like this this is wild it's like how close are we to flint do we have clean drinking <laughs> water too like it, it, it it's it was just wild so we go to you know the lady who dropped us off mm -hmm. the lyft driver we was like okay some of the other restaurants that she pointed out that she said were nice um let's try those you know let's try those. we go yeah. to those same sign oh, on no. the door, pa like powers out. So it's definitely the power grid. It's was not it? a fluke with that particular restaurant. Was it the same handwriting? No, <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> that's funny. But it, it was just, it was just discerning. That's, like, that's you strange. know, it was like, Hmm, it couldn't, it couldn't have possibly been some big evil corporation that uh, failed so many <laughs> times and, you know, survived, destroyed a big city, big booming city. And, uh, uh, it, you know, has survived only on government bailouts alone. It couldn't have been that at all. Tell me about the good food and music you had. OK, <laughs> um, what I do, what I loved about Detroit, yep. the food, if you ever if you ever take like, your family comes over from like, India or whatever, sure. um, you have a bunch of foreign family come to uh -huh. the U.S. and they are like. We have a week or so to see the entire U.S. Right. Where do we get? Where, where, where's the proper American food? Okay. Like where's American style fair besides a country fair, you know, besides a country <laughs> fair, you know, you're going to want to send them to the, uh, to, to New York and to DC to, to DC to see the Capitol, to New York, to see the big apple. Sure. But in terms of food, those all have gentrified food. Sure. They've taken other cultures, foods, other ethnicities, foods, and made it popular there. Like you can get every other country's food in D.C. and New York. Right. Detroit has exclusively American food. <laughs> like this is American stuff. And that was my favorite thing about it. It was like, like That's fine. this is just a, it's just every restaurant is American comfort food yeah. and not like Southern, like back in the day on right. the plantation, uh, uh, Southern food. Right. Like. Pro, like, like stuff that you would get at McDonald's, but made properly and nice. <laughs> it was like that. Um, and so I, I loved Detroit for that. Yeah. And then I also liked. Um, I'm going to have to uh, lose some weight before I go to my trip to Detroit. No, not really. It's not. <laughs> it's nervous. not. It's not like Louisiana. Okay. okay. It's not like you know New Orleans yeah. where you like. If I stay in, uh, <laughs> if I go to New Orleans and stay there for a good pound amount of time all that cajun food all that creole food i would be 300 in a heartbeat <laughs> 300 pounds easy yeah i could do that in a week i could get there in a week tell me about music the music my favorite thing i mean of course it's motown sure. i didn't hear any like classic motown while there okay. which is funny enough that's entertaining but but every lyft driver mm -hmm. that we had every place that we went to restaurant whatever what have you had an incredible playlist nice we went to this nice restaurant called um, Union Assembly. Okay. Which is a nice, nice uh, name for a restaurant in <laughs> the Motor City. But Very um, we didn't actually go to Union Assembly. We went to their side project, okay. which is you order from the alley, but it's the same restaurant. Sure. Um, 
you order from the alley. It's called Mom Spaghetti. It's it's an <laughs> it's a side project and in honor of Eminem, okay. one of Detroit's finest. Sure. And um, all they do serve is spaghetti, okay. and you buy it in a dark an alley. alley. <laughs> and you can go in and sit down in the place. But the, the music, yeah. Enough about the food. The every place just had a great. People in Detroit have the best taste in music. Oh, they just do. Yeah, I'll have to keep that in mind. So I'm headed to Detroit for Automate uh, first first week in uh, June. So I'm excited to uh, get that full experience. I have a car rented instead of taking the nice. Bus, so that will be helpful. We drive around in that, um, and I think I have to see whether um, uh, convention center. Where I'm staying at the convention center, um, so I'm looking forward to uh, that that full experience. Yeah, Steve, can I talk about our sponsor? Before you do, yeah. I have one more thing to talk about. Rapid, tell me. I totally forgot about it. We've got these awesome parts here. Yeah, tell me about these parts. The, 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 this was the best swag that the, I brought back from Rapid. Oh, okay, I've got this 3D printed from a generatively designed design. Um, that you just broke. That it just, no, it's <laughs> it's fine. It's a it's a generative design 3D printed metal bottle opener. It nice. weighs nothing, and it looks cool. And, and I can't wait to put it to the test to see if it's strong enough to bottle to open bottle after bottle. But it's really nice. I wish they gave more hand support, more finger support. Yeah. Yeah. I think they were going to show off like, you know, this is a pretty strong tool, but yeah. lightweight. Yeah. We'll see how strong it is. Though. <laughs> we'll put it to the, the next test. one. Um, this is a spinal implant oh. that was printed in mass. It was a mass production part. OK. Spinal implant. Like the they showed us the batch that comes off of the the powder bed fusion uh, build plate. Right. There were hundreds of them oh, wow. on the build plate and they don't require any support. OK. Uh, mass production. And this is a piece that this lattice, you know, when you implant it into somebody's mm-hmm. spine that has whatever kind of I don't know what kind of spinal issue this would cure. <laughs> but um, uh, the, the metal is all porous and designed like this. So bone can mm-hmm. naturally grow around it yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And we talked about that uh, a couple of episodes ago about uh, the benefits of uh, the surface finish yeah. and different materials. And um, exactly. In That's right. And when Nina and Dayton and I arrived at Rapid before, at, well, in Detroit, before we even went to the show, we had a visit with uh, one of the um, Amer- no, not, uh, Manufacturing USA Institute's Lyft. Yeah, cool. Got to meet their um, uh, president and CEO, the okay. founder. Right. Um, and I also got to meet N- Nigel and um, Noel, their mm-hmm. chief technology officer. I think that's his title. Yeah. But, um, uh, you know, the, the, the two heads of Lyft. Yep. And it was just really cool. And, and this was one of the pieces of swag that I brought back. They have an incredible <laughs> facility. Yeah. Like, I like, like they have a full production facility. Oh. And but, it, you know, it's it's for research. Yeah, and, yeah, and they yeah. do a lot of government contracts mm-hmm. and, and not just government contracts, but the contracts with other companies yep. in general. And, and, and they have a really advanced manufacturing facility. They also do a lot of work with education. Yep. Um, so like they have like high school students that mm-hmm. come in. And um, do robot programming mm. on a digital twin. And when they graduate and they do a good enough job on the digital twin, uh-huh. then they can go in the actual automate the automation production cell right. and program the robots in there. I thought you were going to say they've proven they're competent in the digital twin. They have the physical right, twin right. that the digital twin is based it. off of. Yep. Then they can actually go work in that, I, and that's more valuable than the degree. <laughs> I thought you were going to say once they graduate, they get a robot. <laughs> no, <laughs> that would be cool. That'd be sick, though. That's, th- thanks for this uh, piece. Oh. And there's one more. And the last part, the last one this is from EOS, really showing that big energy. Yep. Um, there's six parts in this, but it was it's was printed as one part. It was come one came print. from one yep. program. Nice. There was no assembly because that's the beauty of additive manufacturing. You don't no assembly required, but there's six moving parts in here. Yeah, there's three planetary gears, one thing in the middle, another like sub housing or sub frame, and then the other main frames. There's three full on parts, and it's like you can see the planetary gears on the bottom of it. In the top, it's a uh, a blisk. It kind of looks like a uh, a turbo fan, turbo yeah. prop, or no, not turbo turbo fan engine on a plane and you have the blisk and when you rotate it, the, uh, the blisk turns That's really fun. fast and it's cool. It's geared. So like you turn it at one speed and it, the blisk actually rotates at like twice the speed you're turning it. 
So that's pretty cool. I do like the nested uh, prints where the assembly is self-assembling. Basically, it's fun. Rapid was a blast. I I also covered some more of the companies that I saw. Yep. Um, in detail in the well, in as detail as I get <laughs> in uh, this week's tech report that Definitely. came out today. Yep. yep. So yeah, that that's a. Uh, I'm glad that that event went well, and uh, it sounds like SME put on a very good uh, event, and there was a lot of good. This is coming uh, out next week. Last week's tech report. <laughs> yes, the one you want to release today. Yeah, go back. You got to go back. Oh, you got to go back. Got to go back if you want to see it. It's on AMT Online if you want to see it. amtonline.org slash resources. Uh, today's sponsor is IMTS Plus. IMTS Plus is your one-stop shop for manufacturing digital content to get you ready for IMTS and after. That's the key, I think, right? We're, uh, yes, sir. I- IMTS is right around the corner, but we're going to continue providing content on that platform well after uh, I'm t- um, the actual event. Uh, so we're hosting videos and articles on topics relevant to manufacturing technology, which we're definitely interested in, and business of manufacturing. Uh, it's all free, and I personally guarantee you'll find something you like. Go to IMTS.com. Do it. Now. No, finish this first, then go. <laughs> listen finish to this a, podcast listen first. Listen to us on the way. <laughs> we're a podcast, Steve. <laughs> well, by the time this episode's over, you'll have found your way to the content that you want to see on IMTS+. Plus. Uh, to, to, uh, walk us through the first article. You got something on Joel. Oh yeah. Joel, you guys should meet Joel. So anyway, this um, is from, this is from rapid. So I, I, I was introduced to this company at rapid Joel, yep. a like, like Seoul, South Korea. Um, but it's a Japanese company mm-hmm. and the company is spelled J E O L. Um, the, the, the article that I found from 3D printing is Joel to launch J A M hyphen 5200 EBM 3D printer in the U S technical specifications and pricing. It's a bad title and it's really <laughs> advertising, right? But what's cool is to make this a less advertising article. Um, we saw this in person and mm-hmm. they didn't actually have, they debuted the machine at rapid they say in the article that we're gonna we're gonna they're gonna have it at rapid they didn't have it at rapid they didn't launch it at rapid they debuted it so like you couldn't go to rapid and actually see the machine um but they will have it at imts nice but let's talk about the machine do it also the article says uh specifications and pricing yep they don't say a price. <laughs> There's a link to say like go, go to this that's link funny. to get a free to get a quote. That's a tease. It's like man, that's, that is that's manufacturing it, equipment for you. Three D printing industry is better than this. Yeah, a lot better than this. Um, but let's talk about the company and the machine. Yeah. Um, when I was talking to you about this, you were, I, I I described that or I said that it was electron beam three right. D printing. You did, and you were like, oh, that's been done before, but. When I went on further to say <laughs> that it's electron beam melting and specifically metal powder bed right. electron beam, like the energy source is an electron beam yep. um, the, and it's a powder bed fusion system, yep. which is, you know, you typically see with a laser. Yeah. They use an electron beam because the company knows their way around electron beams. They That's don't cool. fiddle with lasers. They yep. do electron beams because the company has a history and a background in metrology devices yep but like not necessarily ma- manufacturing industry metrology devices but electron microscopes yeah they're like hey electron microscopes also use electron beams <laughs> let's use these electron beams that we're masters of to melt metal powder and oh. 3d print stuff and they did that and the cool thing is because they have this track record they're well established for making electron microscopes. They, uh, um, <laughs> um, because they do electron microscopes while they're printing with the, with an electron beam power source, right. um, they can do in situ monitoring oh. of the print. So it's yeah. that electron beam is used to not just direct energy onto the metal powder. Yep. But it's also to to measure it and make sure the part coming off of it is 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 good. That's clever. And it's so cool. And I'm so pumped about this company because they really are. They're super Japanese. Yeah. There were two Americans there. Okay. There was there was uh, and one of them was the president who was showing us around. Um, but uh, 
you know, when we when we did the the business card exchange. Yeah, there's a formality to dude, that. Dude, I had to put down my pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did have a pizza in my hand. That's the best way to um, walk the show floor. Um, I had to put down my pizza and I was like, oh, snap. This is a Japanese company. I got to do a two hand business card exchange. Yeah. So I received I received the business card with both hands. Yep. And then I looked at the business card and, and read every line of every it. line. <laughs> and then I, re- I I handed my business card and they did the same thing. OK. And I was like, oh, we really are doing this. <laughs> so I made sure to put their business card away when they weren't looking. Because yeah. apparently you're supposed to hang on to it the entire time. But I had to pick up my pizza. <laughs> um, pizza over business cards. But uh, <laughs> yeah, they were showing us around. And the other the other thing that was really cool in Japanese about them is they didn't say it. But they definitely had this approach to Takumi craftsmanship. Tell me about that. So the Takumi concept in in Japan is a a job or a, an employer or a company. It's very best craftsmen. They call Takumi right craftsmen. They are the best of their trade. They're not just masters, you know, like like apprentice sure. or master. Yeah. They are the very best of the best. Like yes. in the wine world, a level four right. court of master sommelier <laughs> would be ca- considered a Takumi gotcha. sommelier. Yeah. I don't understand anything you said about the wine, but yeah, I agree. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. But like in 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 like like another Japanese company, Seiko. Yeah. Um, Seiko has multiple different tiers of products you can buy. You can just buy like the standard Seiko watch. Then they have the next level up is like the Presage, yeah. which has a little bit better craftsmanship to it and less automation to put it together. And the next level up after that is probably like King Seiko. Yeah. And then the next level up above that is Grand Seiko, <laughs> which Seiko will lead you to believe that that's the top of the line. Right. But they actually have one more hidden, oh. kind of like Mercedes Maybach. Sure. The highest level of Seiko watch is actually called Credor. Okay. And Seiko only employs to assemble Credor watches their Takumi craftsmen. Wow. Some Takumi craftsmen work for Grand Seiko. Sure. But if you want a 100% Takumi craftsman assembled and manufactured and built watch, you go to Credor. And it's so much so that the only person that's not Japanese that works for Credor is the greatest Swiss watchmaker of our time that's still alive, <laughs> sure. uh, Philippe Dufour. Nice. He works for – he's hired as a consultant okay. <laughs> for Credor, and he is in charge of the entire line. He's in charge of everybody there, yep. and he approves of designs and stuff like that, and it shows. But the people working under him are Seiko's Takumi craftsmen. All of that was said to come back to this. Um, one of like the housings of their electron beam, like the fuselage of the thing sure. that creates the <laughs> electron beam is gorgeous. And yeah, it's printed okay. on their own machine. Cool. Their own machine makes parts for their machine. Yeah. Um, and it has like these intricate designs that can only be made using additive manufacturing. And so I had to ask the president, the U.S. Mm-hmm. president there, um, I asked him, uh, so are these designs like like what is the function right. it could be of heat these designs? It could be heat yeah. sink, like you know, uh, or like for heat exchange uh-huh. stuff like that. Um, well, I because I was I was buckling up for right. an awesome story <laughs> as to the purpose of those designs. Okay, and I, instead I received a breath of fresh air, and he looks at me, he's like, "That's just for decoration. That's mm. just for pure aesthetic beauty." That's and amazing. that was so relieving That's hearing yeah. that, and. They, they like they they take like Swiss watch pride right. yeah. in the parts that go into this machine. So you can't not be excited. <laughs> and then on top of that, you know, you and I are huge fans of in situ monitoring, yep, absolutely. like closed loop yeah. inspection of parts. That's their bread and butter, baby. <laughs> it's fascinating, you know, uh, from designing parts for so long about uh, saying as functional as possible. Being able to court, incorporate something that's aesthetically pleasing is, is a fresh air, it's big. fresh air, especially in manufacturing. You really get to see where and I just I can't they paint a machine or something like that, but adding ornate uh, ornate designs to it. And that's cool. Right. It reminds me of like the you know old uh, British sailing vessels, or even before that, where they add tons of decorations outside of it. Yeah, that's that's cool. The article, but they're gonna they're gonna be at IMTS, and I can't wait to see them. Look up Joel. Look up Joel. Joel, please become a member. (laughs) 
I've got one on Industry 5.0. This article makes a claim from machine design about uh, process manufacturing ready to evolve again. And he believes Industry 5.0 is right at the edge or partially into it. Again? <laughs> We're not even at 4.0. Well, we- <laughs> Just kidding. Our members, the builders, developers, and distributors of... The advanced manufacturing technology that is bolstering and supporting industry 4.0 and 5.0. Um, they are ahead. They're they're, ahead. they're 5.0. They're br- but man, end users, you gotta step up. Because <laughs> they're still on 3.0. <laughs> we were talking about the broad spectrum of adoption of this, and the, the article is making the argument that you know there's enough maturity in uh, 4.0, there's a lot of lessons learned, um, harvesting innovation. And, you know, adding the human element of 4.0 that kind of propels us into 5.0, which is um, cognitive computing and infrastructure combining all that together. Uh, so I thought it was a argument, but I agree with you. Uh, where we are in industry 4.0, I feel like they're, the, they're like a teenager. They're kind, of, they're kind of growing and kind of spurts and bounce. And, you know, now, now they have like hairy armpits you know, that they didn't plan on. They're kind <laughs> of sweaty. And I feel like that. Um, industry 4.0 is kind of <laughs> along the same line, right? We've come a long way. Industry 4.0 is an awkward stage. A little awkward, yeah. Because it's like it 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 doesn't seem pivotal, right? The way um, you know mass production industry 2.0 was, right? Or or you know har- harnessing steam engines or wind or you know water powered stuff right. in industry 1.0. Um, it doesn't seem as provocative and obvious as that. Right, right. But they become less obvious as you go up the yeah, levels right. only because they're more recent. <laughs> Once we're on industry six and 7.0, right. you know, we'll look at, we'll look back at four and five and be like, wow, that was a jump. <laughs> and I think he is jumping the gun a little bit. We won't bit be up. around then. We <laughs> yeah, that's true. Ink and will still be viable. <laughs> My ink and parts that I designed 20 years ago will still be around. <laughs> Yeah, I think he's jumping the gun a little bit. I mean, I, I feel like that there he's trying to create a new kind of category, new buzzword um, related to this. And I think you know some of the stuff he's talking about about artificial intelligence uh, being applied on the on the infrastructure for um, the manufacturing plants is kind of an extension of four point. It's not a clear cut line that he's making, and it's I, I think he's he's doing himself a little service and trying to segregate himself from four point. I think four point is so broad and advanced that. Yes. We're going to keep talking about it for a while. And then the next leap will has to be much more uh, a clear cut line. You know, it's funny. I was just saying we were just I was just saying that whole rant of like the, the, the how pivotal the other industries levels were. Yep. I think industry 5.0 will be everything from 4.0, right. but finally working. <laughs> <laughs> That's <works>. mean. <laughs> uh, tell me about. Harley Davidson, Steve. Harley Davidson, my second and last article. Not your favorite manufacturer or a uh, car uh, bike manufacturer. Man, I don't need to. We, we've, we've, I've already <laughs> ranted enough today. I don't need to rip into them. I'm going to try to keep this light. All right. um, Jalopnik releases the released the article. Harley Davidson stops building gas powered motorcycles over regulatory compliance issue. Oh, are they pivoting? That, are they pivoting to electric bikes? So they have an electric bike, they and do. it's very successful. The Live Wire, Live Wire, that's what it's called. Terrible name for a bike <laughs> or it's, electrical well driven you know, machine. <laughs> so I get their mentality. Sure, Harley Davidson is a brand that markets to a bunch of old white dudes that have no business <laughs> on a chopper or something like that, like a Harley Davidson. Right, which those became popular by biker gangs who were formed by veterans that came back from very hard times and were looking for that brotherhood and camaraderie that they did not get back in peaceful America. Yeah. So, and then Harley Davidson sells brand new bikes to old white dudes that try to look like that, but are (laughs) in fact fortunate sons. Right. Um, all right. right, I promised I wouldn't, but I did. Um, what, they, what was your question? <laughs> are they pivoting to electric bikes? So, okay. They have the live wire. That's right. The name of the live wire came from um, <laughs> the taste and music of old white dudes. Ah. ACDC. <laughs> Fair. Uh, live wire. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it yeah. has to do with, yeah. oh, ACDC, another great electric <laughs> reference. Uh, Antichrist devil's child. <laughs> um, but. Uh, uh, so what are uh, they doing here? 
Are they making new electric bikes or? So you would think that the title makes you think that, oh, wow, they're doubling down on electric, even yeah. though we know that's not true. Right. Because a couple months ago, they decided that they were going to stop production of the live wire, <laughs> not because it wasn't a success. It was because they don't want an electric bike to sort of sully the Harley Davidson name, the the obnoxious right. exhaust rumble name of Harley Davidson. And they were, they're contemplating starting a new line hmm. of bike and they may even call it live wire for sure. all of their, their electric bike range. They're right. planning an electric bike range right. right now. They just have the one and it is awesome. Um, but uh, no, the truth is they're just halting manufacturing uh, until they get their lobbyists, which Harley <laughs> Davidson has the very best lobbyists sure. since, since the pharmaceutical industry. So, and so they're just stopping production. They're stopping production. <laughs> and Dang they're it, like, Harley. look what we're going to do to the GDP <laughs> because Nothing. guess who has all of the money? Old white dudes. And if we don't sell them <laughs> bikes, then it's not going to the economy. Silly Harley. So they're they're going to manipulate the government sure. like that to yeah. get them to get their way, like ah. they always do. I was hoping for a market shift where we Man, they see more suck. shifting towards electric vehicles, but I would like to see a, a hybrid bike. I'd like to see any sort of money go to research and development at Harley Davidson. <laughs> I do like the. Uh, uh, charged uh, motors on some of the bikes, like adding a turbocharger or supercharger. Oh, uh, oh, uh, I am so glad you mentioned that. Like the Kawasaki Ninja H2, how it has supercharged. <laughs> Before Kawasaki even did that, back in the 80s, Honda was killing Harley so bad. Yeah. They were they were decimating them in sales so bad that Harley cried to the uh, U.S. government and be like, you need to put a... Um, tariff on Japanese motorcycles <laughs> because they're killing us right now and make a law that Japanese motorcycle brands can't import anything over one liter in displacement. Meanwhile, Harley is making bikes that have more than twice the <laughs> displacement of Japanese bikes, yep. yet delivering less than half the power and torque of Japanese bikes. It's, it's just a pathetic company. I, They've done nothing in uh, research and development. So Honda's retort <laughs> to show them who's boss right. was like, fine. We won't make later bikes anymore. And they put a turbocharger on a motorcycle. <laughs> That's Those clever. nutcases in Japan put a turbocharger on a motorcycle. And we're just like, guess what we can do? <laughs> we're still a, we're still crushing Harley Davidson in terms of performance and getting uh, gas, good gas mileage. If you're in a, if you're in Detroit, we can have a drink and discuss who's kookier, Japan, Germany or Italy. Japan hides it. <laughs> yeah, we have this would this would be a good discussion, All but right, not my, for this podcast. <laughs> my last article is from MIT, uh, straight from their website or MIT.edu. Uh, yeah, their news website. Uh, the the title is "Is it topological?" A new materials database has the answer. So, um, the idea of something uh, of topology stems from a branch of mathematics that studies the shape that it could be manipulated or deformed uh, without losing its core properties. So the idea that the example they walk through is like a rubber donut, right? It, you can it, due to the elastic properties, you can squish it, you can twist it around to a certain extent, but it always go back to a donut shape. And what they've uh, created is an online database that anyone can search against. Of uh, it says ninety thousand materials that will retain its uh, properties uh, after being dis disrupted, as in manufactured, processed, or anything along those lines. Uh, so I thought it was fairly interesting that. Um, they've gone down this path. Uh, they mainly talk about electrical properties, um, so more towards electronics, obviously. Um, but it's a free database that anyone can search against and use. Uh, they, they said the organization is very similar to a periodic table. And um, they want to you know, kind of explore the broader spectrum of different materials as opposed to going to these rare earth materials for, um, for um, electronics. Uh, so they, wanna harness, they want the user base to harness and build also low-power low transistors, New magnetic memory storage devices and you know other electronics that will can, you can increase their robustness um, by using uh, these um, materials that will hold their property um, no matter how they're processed. So that's pretty okay. cool. Something very valuable again from MIT. MIT would have something about topology because it makes no <laughs> sense to me. I recommend you check out the uh, article. You, the author does a great job explaining I'm, it. I'm going to have to read that and it's going to take me an hour. And you and Dayton should check out the material database since uh, he's a materials nerd. He knows all. Dude, I love that we have him because 
I thought I knew a good amount about materials nope. and he knows all of the things. There's a whole science. It really is. Steve, where can they find more info about us? Oh, you're there. First, well, I'm just, like I said, I'm struggling. <laughs> My flight was delayed five yeah. and a half hours. Oh, let me tell you more about that on the flight home yep. from Detroit. So everybody that was still on that flight, a lot of people left. Right. And it was like, okay, we're getting a flight somewhere else. So by the time the flight finally boarded and we took off, you know, it was half the people were right. on the plane. Right. But all of these people trying to come back to DC were waiting at the gate. Um, and every, nobody wants to be there. Right. We just want to be home yep. already. This one guy who was from rapid, yeah. like, like not, not the organization sure. that puts yeah, on rap, not right. SME. This guy is obliterated drunk <laughs> and sure. like the, 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 the gate, the people working at the gate say, did somebody leave a phone in the bathroom? <laughs> this guy goes up to the, the say it's his yeah. and He's like getting into a fight with them, <laughs> what the trying heck? to unlock his phone, <laughs> and and then like like there were racist remarks oh, thrown. No. <laughs> so they called the police, thankfully, and got him out of there. But we don't need any of that, and yeah. it was just a pain. And like that was a lot going on. There was it was just too much going on. I've I've had a rough night. <laughs> well, day's almost done, Steve. We got the weekend here. Yes, looking we forward make, to we it. We can make it. But you can find more good stuff and hopefully no flight delays. <laughs> amtonline.org slash resources. Nice. And if your flight is delayed, keep listening to us. Oh, yeah. We'll go to amtonline.org slash resources to find some uh, some ultra premium content to keep you occupied while you're waiting for your flight. Oh, Steph. Thanks. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks, Ben. Bye. Bye.